In this episode of Automower Answers, we're going to look at replacing wheel motors. Now, there's a lot of errors you can get that might lead you to believe you have an actual issue with the wheel motor. So it's very important that you, you really check over the mower to diagnose it before just jumping to the conclusion that you definitely need a wheel motor. So you could get things like wheel motor overload, um, no drive, stuff like that. What you're going to want to do is pop the cover off of the automower, check the rear wheels, make sure there's no obstructions, make sure everything's clean, there's not some kind of rope or wire or something wrapped around the wheel that's jamming it up or, you know, a vine causing it not to be able to turn freely and go. The next thing you want to do is you want to take the cover off of the uh, wheel itself in the center and make sure the nut is tight. We've seen a couple cases where the nut has come loose and the wheel motor is trying to spin the wheel, but the wheel is just sitting there because there's nothing to hold the wheel tight against the wheel motor and make it spin. This is something that we, we saw a good bit on mowers where customers or other dealers had put a terrain kit on there. The terrain kit, if the, uh, the ground is solid or it's driving across pavement or sidewalk or something like that, there's a little bit of extra vibration. It can cause that nut to come loose if it's not properly tightened. Um, we'll get into that a little bit more later on here, but those are the first steps you want to take. Now, replacing the wheel motor means splitting the actual automower case open. This means undoing that warranty seal on there and voiding your warranty. So if your mower is under warranty, I strongly suggest you take it to a dealer and have them take care of the diagnosis and fix the mower. If your mower is no longer under warranty, then if you want to handle this on your own, it's a pretty simple process, and we're going to show you here in a little bit what you got to do to replace the wheel motor. But before we get into that, if you take it to a dealer, they're going to be able to hook it up to the auto check program, and they're going to be able to diagnose for sure that the wheel motor is the issue. So when the dealer hooks the auto mower up to their auto check 3 program, this is what they're going to see. They can take a screenshot of this. They can send us to Husqvarna and get you covered under warranty in no time. You know, this is the big benefit to taking it to a dealer when it's under warranty because you don't want to have to pay for this wheel motor replacement if you can get it covered under warranty, right? So it's definitely worth the time to contact your dealer and get them to check it out and take care of it. That's what a warranty's for. So if your mower's not under warranty or you're just wondering what it's like to remove a wheel motor, this is it here. You split the mower open, the wheel motor connects right into the motherboard. Then you're going to want to take off your nut that holds the wheel on, take the wheel off, and behind here you see you have four Torx head screws. Take them out, and your wheel motor is ready to pop right out through the uh, hole in the chassis there. So real simple to do. You just want to make sure you don't get any wires caught up. Make sure they're all free, and it's just going to slide out right like that. Easy enough, right? So double check that the O-ring on the new wheel motor is properly secured, and then just slide the new wheel motor back in there and... Do everything in reverse, put this baby back together, and you're going to be ready to go. So here you can see we got both wheels spinning at about the same speed, so we're good to go there. So as you just saw, there's not a whole lot involved with replacing a wheel motor. Biggest thing is, like we said, make sure it's diagnosed and it actually is the wheel motor. Um, if it's under warranty, let the dealer do it. If it's not under warranty, then, hey, if you want to take it on yourself to do it, you saw how, how it's done there. Um, yeah, we kind of rushed through it because there's not really a whole lot to it. You just want to make sure you don't ever tighten anything. So you strip out, you know, the screws that hold the case together and get dirt and moisture in there or strip out the holes that hold the wheel motor onto the chassis. Um, make sure your wheels are bolted on tight and you should be good to go. So we kind of went through that pretty quick because we wanted to get to the main part here that we know you were going to be looking for. And that is why did this wheel motor fail? Why were we replacing it? The majority of the wheel motors that we see fail or that we replace is a bearing issue. Now, that doesn't mean it's a bad bearing. It could be other things that cause the bearing to go bad or to lock up. In this case, this one here, this wheel motor overheated. The grease in there got hot. It got brittle. It broke apart, and pieces of this hard grease got into the bearing and several other areas in the wheel motor and jammed it up. This is an issue that we have seen before. This is something that can be caused by extreme heat. If it's, you know, the mower is mowing in really hot conditions over and over again, especially if it is mowing on a hill, 
that is at a steeper incline than what is recommended for the mower. It overworks the wheel motor, the wheel motor runs hot, and the grease ends up burning up inside that wheel motor unit. Now, we can't say for sure what happened with your, your wheel motor or what caused the issue. We're just giving you an example there of some that we've seen and what has caused it. But what we can do is give you a little trick here to show you how to solve it. If your wheel motor was just simply locked up, remove the wheel motor from the mower, take out the four little screws around the motor that separate the gear case from the electric motor. After the four screws are out, carefully split the two pieces in half. You see one side is your gear case where you see the four little gears in there. Make sure not to lose any of them or let any of them fall out. The other side is your electric motor. And you see there's a washer right there around the shaft coming out of the electric motor. If you haven't removed that already, well, you're in for a treat because this is where your problem lies. If you remove this washer and you find a mess like this, where you've got burn up grease behind that washer, this is your problem. And there's a good chance that this wheel motor is still salvageable. How could that be, you say? Well, I'm going to show you. Now remember, there's no guarantee you're going to be able to save your wheel motor for sure. But if it, yours isn't under warranty anymore, this is worth a shot. What you're going to want to do is you're going to start with the gear case side. Grab a hold of the shaft where you bolt the wheel on. If you can spin that, then you've got a good chance of saving this thing. Um, if it's a little tight or even if it's seized up, don't lose hope. What you're going to want to do is just squirt a small little shot of WD-40 down in there and try to turn the shaft and let that WD-40 circulate down in there. Just keep spinning around. You'll see all kinds of black and brown stuff coming out of there. What happened is when that grease burned up or it got hot and it got down in there and got hot then, little pieces of that got into the bearing and just kind of jammed it up. So the WD-40 is going to loosen that up and it's going to make a mess, uh, but it's going to free up that gear case and that whole end of the wheel motor assembly. So we're not done yet. Now what you're going to want to do is grab your electric motor and there's two spots right here and here. These spots here actually have screws behind them. There's just some sealant covering them up. So you want to pop that sealant out of there and you want to take this piece off the top of the electric motor. And this here is what you'll have left. Now, if that shaft coming out of that electric motor does not spin, I don't recommend you spraying WD-40 down on this electric motor. What you can use is just a few small shots of electric motor contact cleaner. Squirt that down into two holes where you remove the screws from and gently try to turn that shaft back and forth till it frees up. Nine times out of ten, you're going to be able to get that shaft to free up. It'll be the same thing as on the uh, gearbox side where you'll probably see some brownish black stuff coming out of there. It was the grease that got in there and seized everything up. So now there's no way of telling whether or not you've got everything out of there. There's no way of telling for sure that you got everything out of the gear case end of this wheel motor assembly. But everything is working now, right? Everything's free. It's not jammed or seized up anymore. So, hey, it's worth a shot. Um, now you could go ahead. You could put that top piece back on the wheel motor. You could put some sealant on there. You can put some grease in there. You know, you're ready to put this motor back together and give it a whirl. So you got your, your grease in there. You got your sealant on there. You got that washer back in there. You slide everything together. And all you got to do is put the four screws back in here and your wheel motor assembly is complete and ready to go back in to try it out. So here we took that wheel motor that we just freed up and we just put it in here to connect it real quick. And you can see down there in the auto check three, this is what it looks like. You can see it's working pretty much just fine. Um, working just like a new one would. Uh, you saw what it was like on auto check three before when that motor wasn't working. This one here, you can see it's spinning. Um, it goes both directions. No issues there. Now, this is something we've done before where we had a, a demo that we needed a wheel motor for. And uh, they weren't available right away. So... We did this little trick right here because we were desperate to get a wheel motor going in this thing. And that demo there, it's been running for over a year now with that same wheel motor in it. So this isn't something that'll work for everybody. Again, we're not promising anything. We're not guaranteeing anything. We're just going to show you this little trick here. If yours is out of warranty and you want to try to squeeze some extra mileage out of that wheel motor, there you go. There's a little tip that might help you out.
So as always, we hope you were able to learn something here. Maybe save yourself some money or some headaches or save yourself some time. Um, any questions or comments, feel free to leave them on this video link. Uh, or you can shoot us an email at automelorinfo at gmail.com. If you're interested in what you saw here, be sure to subscribe to our channel because we're always putting out new material. So that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for watching.